Ah, Etheria, your beautiful bounty. So alien, so exquisite. So... I guess this is how we're starting out. Okay, plant-hating robots are destroying things for the Horde. Diet Poison Ivy Perfuma comes in for the save. The Princess Alliance plus bow are fighting the robots. Nepotism Glimmer is the leader. And after one cool thing, basically a new character, Frosta, begins annoying Glimmer by acting like Glimmer. Yeah, now you know how we feel. Over in the Matrix, sketchy as f Light Hope is kink-shaming Adora with the simulation of everyone's favorite asshole cat. Tiger Mom Light Hope can continues to warn don't fuck up Adora to not be like the last She-Ra, but Light Hope is Light Hope, so last She-Ra was probably a great person. Reality Check Bo is trying to get Small Picture Glimmer to look at things logically, but she's dealing with a unnecessary sequel. In the War Room, people are being catty. About to Snap Perfuma is over live action Ariel. Wasn't invited for Christmas Aunt Casta is dealing with passive aggressive Angela. Lord has gained more territory. Skip. How it's done Katra is schooling her backup friends on how to be a badass. Step one, be Katra. Step two, repeat step one. Robots and Chill and Chapta shows off her bots getting wrecked by the Alliance, so she makes even better versions. PowerPoint Scorpion and Katra give their sales pitch on how to defeat the princesses. We get a peek at weirdest thing I've ever shipped. Miss them when they're gone, Katra hangs out with her friends, or she would call them friends. They kick back and watch their droids try to steal some more old one tech. Over in Best Friends Land, Pop meets Kettle Glimmer, yells at Frosta for acting like Glimmer. But it's okay, they have a teachable moment afterwards where Glimmer realizes she's becoming her mother. Magic Mike is bummed out that he isn't the tech prodigy and Trapto was. And why the f are you giving Bo side eye? Horse, shut up. No one likes you. Team Friendship gets powered up by working together and are able to defeat the new robots. Because when you're the protagonist, just being a decent person is enough to get rewarded. Catra triggers the Chaozu protocol. Wait, what? Then goes off to gloat about how great she's doing to her abusive mother. Catra, honey, you don't need to do this. Well, this is gonna bite her in the ass later. Okay, um, looking for love in all the wrong places. Catra is still desperate for the approval of the people that abandon or leave her. Oh, and Bo thinks that Trapta is being forced to work for the Horde. Next episode, we start with Terrible Idea Light Hope, saying they should give the horse more screen time. Uh, shouldn't I work on mastering my own abilities first? Yes, yes, yes. Anything but that. Twined. They sure are! God damn it! The dynamic duo cry about how they left and trapped up behind. Nah, y'all made the right call. No use getting someone else killed over another person's ashes. Conveniently stupid Glimmer stages a rescue, but for plot reasons, decides not to call for backup. Sneaking into the Horde base camp, OG best friend squad spies on not terrifying cat person, who is facetiming with Entrapta's babysitter. Kyle? They put Kyle in charge? What, were they out of wet blankets to throw on her? Twice their age Entrapta screams, creating a classic misunderstanding where the heroes think she's being tortured. Not gonna comment on that. Catfight Glimmer attacks Say It Don't Spray It Catra. They tussle. A for effort Scorpia pitches in. It's okay, honey, we love you. You can do no wrong. Then Bun Masher Glimmer captures Catra pretty much unintentionally. Back in the beat plot. And Swift nope. Guantanamo Glimmer wants to trade shit-eating grin Catra for Entrapta, but Bugs Bunny Catra decides to spend the entire episode just messing with the two. Best bro Bo tries to befriend Katra, who is fine with anything, until you mention Adora, intentionally making Glimmer waste all of her energy and making her want to commit several federal felonies to slap the shit out of Katra, which I love her, but I completely understand. World's greatest goof Scorpia is panicking over her lost alley cat, but when she picks up her signal, literally, Scorpia carries the side characters. Coming to the rescue, John or Savvy Catra says they'll kill Entrapta if the noble rebels don't release her. Playing by the rules, Glimmer releases the stray, then kick him while they're down. Catra reveals convenient screamer Entrapta is working for the Horde willingly. And inventing a party robot? Hmm, gonna file that under weird. This is what we in the YouTube community call a dick move even if she doesn't realize what she's doing. Good girl gone bad Glimmer tries to punch a bitch in the face. She then reveals she lied about being out of energy. So one point Glimmer, the end. Oh, did you want to hear about what was going on with Swiftwind and Dora? Okay, hold on, let me show you. Mm. 
there you go. Next, the Scooby-Doo gang has a Halloween special where, and get this, the big twist, they're holograms, not ghosts. There, I just saved you 10 minutes of your life. Over in the actually good plot, probably homeschooled and Trapta can't work on a wobbly desk, and R2-D2 can't find the proper wrench, so she breaks into the evil overlord's chambers to borrow one. Vibe check Hordak is busy talking to Katra. You're late. Calm down, boss. Come on, gotta give your star some... <laughs> Allow me to clarify how this relationship works. I am Palpatine. You are Vader. I will sit on my throne and do whatever the f I want. Your job is to do everything else. And if anyone can do the job better or faster than you, I will have you shot, skinned, turned into a litter box for imp. And once a week, your replacement will take it out. And only then will anyone ever give a shit about you. Dismissed. Holy shit, Katra starts working on, well, everything else. Secretary Scorpio reveals that the battalions are understaffed and undersupplied. Now a bureaucrat, Katra has to start a trade quest to make sure everyone gets what they need. And in a world without YouTube, Katra turns to the only person who knows how to do this job. The Shadow Bitch. Who immediately begins worming her way back into Katra's life. To the collective screams of fans everywhere. And predictably, Shadow immediately undermines Katra's self-confidence, leaving her feeling very insecure. Back over with the marvelous misadventures of Entrapta, she sneaks into Hordak's lab, finishing his homework for him, much to his shock. He reveals he's actually an alien from space, and that he's trying to create a space portal. Horny for science and trapped it, immediately volunteers to help. Ladies and gentlemen, the weirdest couple I have ever shipped. Next, we get to see the princesses play D&D. They're allegedly a planning assault on a fort, but that's not why we're watching this episode. Otaku Glimmer imagines herself as Cowboy Bebop, or any Studio Trigger protagonist ever. <laughs> Kyle's hair, yeah, this is definitely anime. Catcher shows up in Glimmer's fantasy. Wait, that came out wrong. This is exactly what it looks like. Sweetheart Bo, on the other hand, is so pure and nice, he imagines the original cartoon. And only Kindred Spirit Perfuma is into it. Well, at least this time there's more than one body type. Kill Them All Perfuma wants to go full attack on Titan. Missa just wants a turn to play She-Ra. No Parental Lock Frosta has apparently seen Berserk. Then She-Ra Buzzkill reminds everyone we could all die, putting an end to the fun times. But they all come together and take the fort. Big meaty claws Scorpia has a side plot about spying on the princesses, but it doesn't matter. In the end, they just decide to blame everything on Kyle. Later, going up north, the Bad Girls trio are up in the cold looking for more MacGuffin technology. Designated driver Seahawk is realizing people only want to hang out with him when they need a ride. That and Mermissa is hanging out with other friends. Game Face Scorpia wants to use this trip to get a date with Freezing Catra. Obsessed with her ex Catra has another woman on the mind. She later uses the alcohol crystal, creating mean drunk She-Ra, who rages out for a bit, before crashing back into Freshman Adora. This throws a wrench in Scorpia's plans as she's now on drunk person duty. In a rut, Seahawk shows up to take Adora home, but the neglected friend squad talks about their personal issues instead. Can't connect, Scorpia is having trouble getting Catra to open up to her. New best friend Seahawk talks with Scorpia about how he gets it. He knows what it's like to be in such an unequal relationship. Hyping each other up, they realize they are great people and they are great friends. Save the day, Scorpia breaks the alcohol crystal, saving ungrateful Catra's life. Adora is left with a hangover, and Scorpia has to drag her idiot crush to safety. Then in the end, Bare minimum Catra lets Scorpia share her blanket. And I am sure this is the moment Scorpia will use to tell other people, no, you don't know her like I do. Girl, you deserve better. Next, Cat in the Cradle Catra is trying to keep Vader Hordak from killing Mommy Dearest. The bulk of the episode is just her backstory about how she went goth. It goes a little something like this. Back at Hogwarts, Shadow Weaver was on the side of good. She taught Glimmer's dad, small gang Micah, everything he knew about magic. Then she messed with forces she can't control, with her apprentice's help. Then strong pull-out game for now. Micah dips. Light Spinner gets corrupted by Lovecraftian horror. Eats. Yes, 
eats her fellow teachers, then joins the Horde out of spite. I'll spare you all the emotional manipulation that happens between Catra and Shadow, but best girl Catra desperately wants to be loved. But she ignores all the people that actually love her in her life, so ugh, it's hard. It's just, it's too real. Abuser takes advantage of this, tricks getting played Catra into giving her what she needs to escape, and Catra, after finally thinking she had the love Adora always had, gets abandoned again. Ugh, you poor thing. And after that dark, heartbreaking story, how does the show follow up on it? With Meet the Parents. Prison Shank Adora and Overreacting Glimmer go to Bo's house, where <gasps> he's fully dressed and pretending to be a student when he's clearly a... Take your pick. We then get to meet Bo's parents. And when I say parents, I mean dads. And not just any dads, dream daddies. The game. Yeah, did you know this existed? How do you like them apples? So, best boy Bo is pretending to be a boring history student because his dad still have PTSD from the rebellion and don't want their son fighting. Bo's trying to pretend he's something he's not. Lies are said, yada, yada, yada. We've all seen this plot before. A beast breaks in, bail you out Bo reveals his badass self and his dads love him regardless because they are just great. They are adorable. I can see where Bo gets it from. They also revealed where the mysterious signal is coming from, which was a plot point that I ignored because f*** it, let's talk about Catra some more. F*** Catra is panicking. Thanos escaped, and if Hordak finds out, she's dead. Life partner Scorpia tries to get Catra to relax, then tells her, it's okay, they'll get Shadow Weaver back, and Hordak, he won't find out. <laughs> she's doomed. Dead cat walking Catra goes to meet with Hordak, who knows Shadow Weaver is gone, but will keep her around if she just tells the truth. Yes, I sent her yesterday, just like you ordered. Damn it. Also, Stranger Danger is coming for Adora. And you failed. Cat, perfect, phenomenal, end it right there, not a second more. What the f***? We can't end with Catra dying and Adora being abducted. Too late, I already dropped it. We made six more episodes. We, we, we set up all these different story threads. Yeah, but more seasons mean more money for us. Then give us more seasons! Sure. Let's just take a season from another show. Why are you doing this? Because we're Netflix. And that is the story of how this season got cut in half. Can't convince me otherwise. Alright guys, like, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for Season 3, or really just 2.5. Peace out.